All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And for this video, we're going to be doing part two of our Relic 10 problem. So you guys know that part one released yesterday. Link in the description down below if you missed that. And you know, this is at least the time of recording. Um, the, I talked about Relic 10, and one of the things I said that the problem why it can't come to the game yet is because Relic 8 and Relic 9 are not accessible enough, right? There's not enough players engaging with Relic 9 and Relic 8 at this point in the game. And I want to be clear what I mean by engaging, right? This goes beyond just putting it on characters that are required for Java, Lord Vader, Kenobi, etc., right? Like, this goes to the point of you are equipping Relic 8 to be able to compete in combat missions in Rise of the Empire, complete in operations, and the vast majority of the player base is not ready for that. So, the, the video today will be the roadmap that Capital Games should follow in my, you know, very educated personal opinion, right? very educated, uh, self-appointed, of course. Um, but it, the roadmap that I think they should follow in order to get us there, right? So let's first and foremost thank my channel members. I really appreciate your guys' continued support here. I know that, you know, I haven't been posting as regularly and I do apologize. I know that I haven't been streaming as much. We're going to get back into it. It's just kind of catching up to everything we've been doing at the house here. So I do appreciate your continued support. If you guys are interested in channel memberships, link down below. Otherwise, smash that subscribe button, leave your likes, leave your comments. Let's get into the video here. All right, so let's go in and talk about the steps that Capital Games needs to take for Relic 10. So the first one is solve the signal data problem. The amount of signal data we need is absurd. And if they follow the current path of signal data, right, it, it takes each signal data level from five to six to seven to eight to nine, all take 10 extra signal data, right? That it goes from 15 to 25. 35 to 45 to 55. So if they follow that trend, Relic 9 to Relic 10 would take 65 blue signal data. That's just absurd. So how can we solve this signal data problem? Well, I think the first thing you could do is get three daily like Chirotex. And let me kind of show you guys, I save my daily challenges for this. So when you complete your daily challenges every day, right, you get this little prize box here where you can get different kinds of gear. So when you claim this, you go ahead and you're going, oh my gosh, Wow, I'm so happy. I got 250 crystals out of here. <laughs> I'm taking a screenshot of this. Oh, this is hilarious. Oh, you guys are going to hate me. Of course, I got that when I'm filming this video. Oh, my gosh. What a... That is hilarious. Um, <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's, that's a nice little pop. Um, anyway, back to like what I was trying to say here. So you get these Chirotex for free every single day. You can get either three of the computers like this or you can get three of the shock prods. Um, you're not going to get 250 crystals every single time. I can tell you that. Um, but you get three Chirotex every day, which adds up to over 1,080 Chirotex over the course of a year, right? Over 365 days. If they did the same thing with signal data, you're going to get that same number of signal data. And the quick math I ran through in my head of how long it takes me to get signal data it would end up being, and I'm using this saying that like if it was a single white, a single green, or a single blue, or that over the course of the year, I got the exact same amount of each color from that login. You would, it would end up saving me, I think about over a month and a half of time based on how long it takes me to like get Chirotech again. I'm not going to go into all that math for you. Just for me doing three refreshes a day, it was like a month and a half of time that was going to save me, which is crazy, right? That's, that's a ton of time when you really sit down and think about how much time that is, right? just three like one of everything every single day that's a month and a half of farming like that is a lot of signal data so you could do that right i think that one's a little bit less realistic than i think the second option here that i have for them which is add it to stores now let's be clear on when i say add it to stores i'm not saying that they add it for credits or that they add it to the galactic war store you're looking at probably adding it to mark three or mark two raid currency and then get three because those are the currencies that they've released the most recently, and they capped them, right? You notice that you cannot hoard beyond 20,000 of this, right? And notice for these ones here, you can't hoard beyond certain numbers. They did this very intentionally knowing that players at the end game can hoard this currency because they might not need the rewards as much. And so they don't want players to benefit from that, right? Either spend it or you're not going to get any benefit. So I think with, you know, signal data... They'd put it into a store where players can't really be hoarding it and having a massive advantage over the rest of the player base. Because remember, with these changes, right, with the, like the change to signal data, the whole point of it is that 
you know, if your player gap between the best player and the worst player is like this, and they make this signal data change, you don't want it to widen and you don't want it to shrink. You want that gap to remain consistent, to have a healthy game, right? You want that gap to, you know, if it starts shrinking, then the guys who are spending the money, right, your top end players are going to get ticked off. And if it starts widening, you're going to piss off all the players at the other end of the spectrum who are like, well, we're never going to catch these people, right? So you got to remain consistent. So I would add it to stores, you know, for, you know, those currencies that are newer. So the second step here is Relic 6 to Relic 7. Now, why am I talking about Relic 6 to Relic 7 in a video where we're trying to get to Relic 8? Well, to get there, right, you need to make the rest of these things easier to get to. And for me, Relic 6 and Relic 7 is an easy fix. You just need to update your assault battles, right? So I'm going to show you guys the current assault battle that we have up right now, which is funny. It is actually for Imperial Troopers and Bounty Hunters, right? It's that Rebel Roundup one. So um, we come down here. And in the final tier, you can at least earn a little bit of signal data, nothing crazy, but you also earn some electrium conductors, right? And, and a few relic materials. I don't know about these pieces if they need updated as much. I'm going to be completely honest, right? I don't know that this is the area where I would go after getting more of these, but for electrium conductors, I definitely would kind of say, hey, we need to get more of these, but more importantly, right? We need to be able to earn Zimital cards, right? That Relic 7 piece, those need to start, and you guys are going to hear me use this term, naturally accumulate or natural accumulation, right? We need those pieces to naturally accumulate, right? You need this stuff to populate in your roster over time through Assault Battles would be my best case scenario because Assault Battles is something that if you put in the work, you can get to rather early. And I think that you need to start that, that as capital games, if you want people to interact with Relic 8s and Relic 9s, you need them to be able to get to Relic 6 and Relic 7 without this massive undertaking and huge savings that it should be like, oh, hey, you know, if I kind of keep these Assault Battles up, I'll be able to at least supplement that a little bit, right? So I think that would be the answer there. And I think that's the best option. That's the only option I think they should explore is instead of trying to add something, just like throw it into Assault Battles there. It's really not that big of a deal with getting a few Zimital cards every single time, right? That's not this astronomical ask, right? Because the grand scheme of things of how many Zimital cards you need is absurd. It's by giving us a few here and there, it lightens the load a, bit, a little bit, right? All right, step three, Relic 8s, right? We've got through our signal data. We got to Relic 6 and Relic 7. Now we need to talk about Relic 8. And here it's kind of one or the other, right? So we've got two versions of Luke here, but for me and Relic 8, it's one or the other. So back in the day, you had the challenge pit raid where uh, it was very easy to get error magnifiers and that impulse detectors were the thing that took forever, right? Now they kind of, you know, I'd say that, you know, there's still kind of a little bit of disparity there because there's no way that you can naturally get impulse. There's not a lot of ways you're naturally getting impulse detectors outside of Rise of the Empire territory battles, earning a certain number of stars. So you've got to be in a very, 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 very advanced guild to even get any kind of impulse detectors naturally. So you either need to fix that or you need to give out some more era magnifiers via territory wars or something, right? Lower that. But again, that natural accumulation of Relic 8 for one of these two pieces needs to increase. Because otherwise you're just, you're kind of like right now, you're in this position where unless you were playing the challenge pit raid, like all of your resources for the new raids have to go into these two things because you're not getting them anywhere else. Um, and I, and that's a, that's an issue that they need to figure out. So they need to make one or the other a little bit more accessible or naturally accumulate, right? Because again, where I'm coming from is that I don't mind that some of your resources have to go to buying air magnifiers or buying impulse detectors. But if all of your resources have to go to purchasing those two things, then you're delaying the process too much and players aren't going to engage with it beyond the bare minimum. And again, with Rise of the Empire requiring you to have that many Relic 8s to do combat missions, operations, right? And don't even get me started on needing them all at Relic 9 to get to those final phases. Like, you need to make these things easier if you want players to be able to engage with that. Because Rise of the Empire is, what, six months old at this point? And, you know, it's supposed to last a very long time, right? But you think still the vast majority of the player base isn't really engaging with those Relic 8 zones yet, right? Even the Relic 7 zones aren't being fully engaged with yet by, 
you know, your vast numbers of the player base. So the, you need to do something to get us there more quickly and get us to engage with it. Because if you go and release Relic 10, everybody's going to be like, well, what's the point of this? I can't even get Relic 8s. So you've got to make one or the other a little bit more common and naturally accumulate. And I'm not saying that you go to the level that the challenge pit raid was, because you look at this, right? Like this is, and this is a great example. Like, yes, I have 700 arrow magnifiers, right? But like, they're, they're not really helping me because I don't have that many impulse detectors, right? It'd be much more beneficial to me if I had, you know, I don't know, a hundred of these and a hundred of these, right? Like that I'd be able to use more of them. So I'm just playing devil's advocate there a little bit that, you know, you need to think about it in terms of, you know, if you give out too much of the one, players are going to get like this again. So you've got to kind of have that parity, but it's one or the other naturally accumulate other one use resources for instead of having to use resources for both. That's where I think I'm kind of sitting at, right? And then Relic 9, finally just naturally accumulate. Again, you guys know what I mean here. So for me, it's the droid brains are something that, you know, you're getting, right? Fine. I mean, you're not getting a lot of them, right? You aren't. There's not, there's not enough of these in the game that you feel like you can make good progress there. But for me, what I'm saying is that like these Gerda keypads, we need some other natural ways to get these things, right? If you're asking us to engage with content, if you're trying to get us to the point where Relic 10 is going to come into the game, you need players to be able to earn these things without having to expend obscene amounts of resources, right? Again, this is not all supposed to, and I, so that's kind of my roadmap, right? Now, in terms of how long I think this would take, you, you notice it was steps, right? So your first step is, you know, get signal data out there and see what that impact is. Like Capital Games, like they did with this other gear change that I know it took them forever to roll it out, right? But your step one is signal data. See if you increase the amount of signal data players are getting, right? Or the availability of it. See how that changes the game. What's the, does that create a whole new bottleneck that there's not enough relic materials in the game? Then you go back and figure that out. Maybe the signal data change is really good and players are like, wow, I actually can breathe a little bit. So then you say, okay, maybe we need to make Relic 6 to Relic 7. Maybe our change doesn't need to be as drastic because they have their resources are freed up and they have more ways to spend their stuff. Maybe they're like, you know, we're still at this point where Relic 6 and Relic 7 are absurd. We just have crazy amounts of signal data. Like they're going to need to roll this out in stages. They're going to need to see that butterfly effect of each of these things because otherwise you're going to find yourself in a position where you've got all this signal data laying around and you don't have enough relic materials to use it. So I do want us to bear in mind that that's a real risk when you do this. And that's exactly why it's in steps, right? That you don't want to just rush right away and give everybody crazy amounts of relic eights. And then they're like, well, we don't have signal data. We don't have Zimbital cards. We don't have Electrium conductors. You know, you've got to go in order and then finally getting to that relic nine. And for me, this would be like a year long process. So I really hope that relic 10 doesn't come with this new grade. I'm going to be completely honest. I really don't want it to come with this new raid. I don't think we're prepared for it. And I think it would take them about a year if they started today, right? If they started with new signal data today, see the impact and rolled out the rest of these changes, I think we could get there. But if you want to be able to release Relic 10 and it to be a positive change for this game, you've got to get the majority of your player base interacting with Relic 8s and Relic 9s. Because I'm going to be completely honest here, right? I have four Relic 10 characters. I've got 10 Relic 8s. That's it. And only two of these characters, as I said in my video the other day, only two of these characters are not required for something. With Piet being a Relic 8 requirement and he's Relic 9, and Wampa, our king, of course, going from Relic 3 to Relic 8. So, and I have a pretty, like, I'm not going to say that I have a fantastic account, right? I've definitely come across a lot better accounts than I have. But my account isn't that bad. And I still don't have that many. And it goes to show just how expensive it is. So hopefully this video kind of helps you guys, gives you what I think is really, you know, kind of some of those core issues going on with why we need to get to relegate that you need to take steps to get there. And I think that each step needs to be looked at and evaluated to ensure that it's having its desired impact. Because by just saying, oh, increase signal data, well, what if you run out of carbonite circuit boards that you can't even go from relic six to relic seven because you don't have those? And that you've got everything else. Like, you've got to look at each step and figure out how it's what the impact of it is in all aspects, and then you can change the game for the good. So that's my thoughts, guys. Like and subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you on the next video. May the force be with you. Cheers.